Hi there. You are listening to, what are they listening to? The Praying Christian Women podcast. <laughs> that was the right? biggest brain fart of, <laughs> biggest brain <laughs> fart of history. <laughs> you guys are listening to something. Like, what's my name? Uh, okay. Yeah. Now I got it. <laughs> I'm Jamie. This is Alana. Or, Hi. you know, maybe the other way around if you're a discerning listener. You yeah. know what I've wondered? I have wondered if, um, because I listen to some podcasts where I have a really hard time keeping track of which host is which. Because, you know, like, especially if you're just listening, you don't see the faces and stuff. Yeah. And I've heard people say that our voices are similar. And are they? I didn't. Yeah. I've had a couple of people tell me that. And I can tell the difference. But some people, but I have that problem, too, with a couple of co-hosted mm-hmm. podcasts. Mm-hmm. So um, I am not Jamie. And this is not Alana. And beyond that, yeah, I have no idea how to. Uh, well, if you're watching on YouTube, it's going to be real easy. Jamie's the one with the baby Yoda background. Okay, yeah, watch this. I never know what I'm going to get when I log on because my <laughs> kids are using Zoom now. So hold on. <clears throat> yes, now you've got the baby Yoda, Yoda ears. ears. Now oh, I'm- he's so cute. I love him. He's Did you see that? Adorable. There's a new toy. They must know I love baby Yoda because it keeps popping up on um facebook ads yeah. like i the baby mm-hmm. yoda toy that's like animatronic no i haven't seen it it's like ridiculously over the top cute oh well baby yoda himself is ridiculously over the top cute for anybody who might not know um baby yoda is from a new star wars tv series i've never been a star wars fan but i did watch the whole season with my family just because baby yoda is so stinking cute He is. He definitely hooked me. He was, Mm -hmm. yeah, he was Mm -hmm. the reason. All right. I'm going to, this virtual background is distracting me. So I'm sure it's distracting (laughs) others that are watching. There you are. Okay. So I have a shout out today. I got something in the mail that is amazing. All right. So my stepmother is an amazing artist. She is a former, like retired school art teacher. And she paints i should bring tomorrow when i'm prepared i will bring one of the gourds that she that she made she's an amazing artist she she paints gourds so okay. here i got a box today for the kids the the place it's called wellburn gourd farm in california mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they it, for those of you watching this is one of the gourds that came in the box they were shipping free boxes of gourds to children that were stuck at home wow to use for art. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's only for their current customers or Mm -hmm. if what it is, but yeah, so we got a box of gourds for the kids to paint, which my kids are big into art, especially. Are they already hollowed out? No. So they're, and and crazy. That's got to be expensive to ship. (laughs) They're really, really light. Are they? Oh, okay. I'm thinking like a pumpkin or something, but no, no, they're dried. Hmm. They're, They're dried out. Okay. And I don't know how it works, but yeah, they're, they're, the seeds inside, they're hollow with these just seeds. It's not like a pumpkin where it's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Or I could actually trick you into thinking it's heavy and be like, oh, yeah, right. Look how strong <laughs> I am. you know, like lifting it, pumping yeah, iron yeah. with the gourd. But anyway, That's yeah, hilarious. shout out to Wellburn Gourd Farm in California for their kindness in shipping gourds to my kids for free. That's really fun. No, I love hearing the stories of what different companies are doing for people at this time. Again, it's just, it's nice, especially for kids. It's nice to know that kids are on people's minds right now. Um, You know, we've been talking a lot in our family, like, what are our kids going to tell their kids and grandkids about this time, you know? And it's just, um, yeah, such a, such an interesting thing that we're all going through. What I think is interesting is to my knowledge, no science fiction or dystopian account of, of things like this, of, of a a virus or pandemic happening had quite this twist of everyone having to like, do you know what I mean? Like you hear about the, the pandemic that wipes out humanity as we know it with just a few Mm -hmm. residual people, but like, Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone predicted this sort of thing. I would be interested to know, not that I'm well-read in the realm of science fiction. Yeah. But you know what? I think just from an author standpoint, like it's not that interesting to write about somebody staying home on their couch. You know what I mean? Like it's not, there's, there's not a ton of excitement. Like 
it's honestly, it's more like a women's fiction. Like, you know, you're at home and you can't go anywhere and you have to face your demons or something. Right. No, (laughs) that's true. It's not super enticing sci-fi. So, okay. Let me tell you, um, I have been, I've not been writing fiction, but I've been mulling over fiction. So let me give you this outline premise. And if any of my fiction readers are listening, I just beg you to forget this by the time I've published the book. So it still sounds like, you know, new and exciting to you. So it would be set during a pandemic, but it would, um, you know, I do kind of like thrillers. And so it would be about a woman who is so controlled all the time by her spouse. Like he's for her, even before the pandemic, he's given her no access to like phone and internet and things like that. And so he tells her that this pandemic is going on, but she doesn't know if this is just another, um, like mind game Mm. that he's playing on her. You know, I think that could be very intriguing. Yeah, definitely. Especially if he doesn't give her access to. Exactly. And then even the readers wouldn't know for sure. Like, is this, is there really a pandemic or is this just, you know, one more thing that he's using to try to control her? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cause there's, there is, there's a, um, a movie with Scarlett Johansson and I think you and McGregor are called the Island And it has, the premise is that the, these people are, well, I don't want to give a spoiler away, but basically people are controlled by being, by being confined in this area and being told Mm -hmm. that the Mm -hmm. area outside the fence, there was this pandemic that wiped out humanity as they know it. Um, I'm going to look into that, the island. Yeah. And you don't know. Okay if it's real yeah, or not and no, yeah, that's exactly the kind of feel um or i know yeah. i think it was john candy he played a villain in a movie like he was really a creepy villain but it was a similar kind of thing like is he just lying to keep this person in line or is something terrible really going on like yeah it's a really it's going to be an interesting interesting thing so again yeah. if you read my novels just forget this whole conversation by the time the book comes out and we'll be fine that's right <laughs> so have you been reading it all lately Um, so I've been listening and I've been, most of my reading lately has been to do research for people that are, um, podcast interviews. So I, I have been wanting to read fiction, but I have not been reading a lot of fiction. I've been reading some with my kids. Um, but no, I've not read for pleasure, you know, just, just for fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've loved the books I've been reading. Like this one actually aired this one is eat, sleep, save the world. (laughs) It's such a fun title. And I love the cover too. For those of you watching, it's a cute cover. Um, that was my most recent read and it was, yeah, I really like it, but I've been, was that written before the pandemic even, or is it like, Oh yeah. Okay. Cause it sounds exactly like what we're all doing, you know, like stay at home and be heroes. That's really yeah. funny. Well, what it is, it's a book. Um, the author is Jamie Sumner and she is, um, she writes, she has a, a son who has um, cerebral palsy and he's mm-hmm. nonverbal, but he can communicate through a, mm-hmm. a talker, like mm-hmm. a um, iPad thing. And, right. but anyway, she, it's, it's basically it, it's amazing actually, but it's it, the, the premise of it is all moms with kids with special needs are superheroes. And Mm -hmm. like just kind of addressing mom guilt. Um, And it's for me, the surprising thing was I read it from the perspective of, well, I want to know how to pray for moms with kids with special needs or Mm -hmm. to have a a bird's eye view into what daily life is like. And I came away with so many practical applications myself because she makes it really relatable. So yeah, it's a very cool book. Yeah, that is cool. Um, but I, yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of pleasure reading. Um, some of that also is that we've had a lot of practical, like hanging curtains and putting stuff on walls and getting the house like put back together after Mm -hmm. having our floors Mm -hmm. put in and, and the walls repaired and stuff. So there's been a little bit more puttering around, but I have been realizing that I have not, I don't think I've really embraced, um, or used my time as wisely in in terms Mm -hmm. of like just 
being still, like I, I still, I, I was thinking about that yesterday too. Same here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I feel like I need to do more of that and I need to do more of like, instead of, nope, I've got to get the dishes done or I've got to put this on the wall or, mm-hmm. or set this up. Like I want to just curl up with my kids and read more, you know? I know. And, I think you said it, like, I think there's going to come a time. And again, this is talking to the people who are going to be blessed in that the worst thing that happens is we stay home for a few months, right? Like, so we're not, um, we're not talking about the people on the front lines or the people who are getting sick or, you know, people who have been laid off. But, you know, right now your family, my family, a lot of families I know are just in a holding pattern, which is hard. Um, Not as hard as what some people are going through, but let's not deny it's hard. But I think that you said it, like there's going to come a time where we're going to look back on this and kind of miss it, you know, like Mm -hmm. we're going to miss not having um, anything to do. (laughs) And I would love to see this, you know, kind of really impact society to get a deeper appreciation for slowing down. Um, having lived crazy rural, I think our family and being homeschoolers, so we're not like flooded with school activity stuff. I feel like our family does a decent job kind of understanding the importance of downtime. Mm -hmm. But even so, kind of like you said, I I read this book yesterday. Um, It's called Bored and Brilliant. And it's, it's several years old, but so applicable for right now. And it's talking about specifically because of smartphones, but also for a lot of other reasons, how we just, you know, we're always getting mental stimulation from things and rarely taking the time to just be bored. Mm-hmm. And she talks a lot about how having time where you're just bored and letting your mind wander is so important for creativity and health and absolutely for prayer you know if if it's um difficult to go 10 minutes in silent prayer because you want to grab your phone it's you're not alone like that's that's a real problem a lot of us face right now um so yeah that was for sure an encouraging book and i I almost feel like it helped me turn a corner just in my outlook of this time because i did have so you know i had several weeks where it really was just survival like let's get our family through this and let's make sure that we don't run out of food (laughs) you know like we don't want to get sick and we don't want to run out of food and those were kind of the only things I was focusing on. And now that we're kind of settled into what feels like it's going to be the new normal for a few months, I really do want to make a deliberate um, practice of just that stillness, that quietness. One of the stories in this book was about a Google executive who ended up retiring because he wanted to, it didn't say he was specifically Christian. So in his, it was, you know, more on the meditate side of things and the prayer side Mm -hmm. of things. But his reason for retiring was he wanted to devote more time to meditation. And um, he said that he was going to treat meditation in the same way like an athlete would treat their skill or a musician, a professional musician would treat their skill. And it had so many implications for prayer too. Like what if we said, you know what, we've been given such an amazing gift where everything is shut down. There's no guilt for not going anywhere because actually you're saving the world by not going anywhere. And, um, you know, really going into it with that idea of, okay, let's, let's use this time to train our minds to become more focused. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a really neat opportunity. You know, you think about even back in the middle ages where Christian monks would, you know, go into the wilderness to get away from distraction. So it's not just the tech of our day, but we kind of are given this opportunity now to do just that. And I I would really encourage, um, I was really encouraged for myself to kind of make that the priority for this time. Yeah, no, I agree. Even Jesus had to go away from the crowds, you know, and go into Mm -hmm. the wilderness. And I, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's a great, a great challenge. And especially because we have so much technology going on right now in our home because the kids are doing school learning and it's fun in some ways, but like my daughter went to bed last night and closed her eyes and she's like, I just keep seeing stuff. Like I think their brains get Mm -hmm. over, over stimulated because, and Mm -hmm. I've been allowing them, you know, the, especially the first couple of weeks, I just allowed them to do whatever they wanted. Oh, same here, which I don't think is bad, but it's not. 
now that we're looking at weeks or yeah. months instead of weeks, it's yeah. yeah. It's I think there's time the for chance. good habits. Yeah. I took my um what is it? The the um calm no not calm the muse headband. I told you about this and we talked about it on the show once. So yeah. it's this headband that you can wear that will kind of measure how active your brain is. And really it's just to give you feedback to try to train you to quiet your thoughts. And I used it with one of my kids the other day because he's, he's it's so sad. I mean, he's just like, he does great and stays so positive and then it all comes out, you know, and it melts mm-hmm. down. And then we kind of, he gets reset and we start over again. Mm-hmm. And so we did the muse headband with him and it was just so nice, you know, and he's, he's little. So I think maybe we, we didn't even do a full 10 minutes. I think it was like a seven minute thing. And it was just so nice. Like we sat together on the couch, kind of snuggled and did nothing for seven minutes. And it was a gift for sure. Like this sense of quietness that the world has been given right now is a gift. Yeah. That's neat. The headband seems like a really good tool to give you a quantitative measure of mm-hmm, quiet. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's a neat thing. I know. Well, you know, not to make a plug, but I actually signed up. Like I, I really thought that it could be a blessing for people wanting to develop good prayer habits. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can get you the link that we can add in the Do um, that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's, it's designed to help people with meditation. And as long as that word doesn't scare you, it's absolutely applicable for our prayer lives. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, but it was neat to do that. You know, we're, we're doing way more family time, a lot more board games and things like that. And I, I really do think that Again, as as long as things don't get worse than they are, you know, if God spares us from sickness and layoffs and food shortages, I think we are going to look back on this time and be like, hey, that was pretty special. Yeah. Well, one thing that I kind of have struggled with a little bit in the last, really today, it hit me kind of hard, okay, is the, I guess you would call it a version of survivor's guilt because I do feel like right now, My husband's job is possible and no one's job is untouchable, you know, but Mm -hmm. right now his job is possible, mostly working from home, going out periodically to do some things outside of home or in the office. And we are, no one has gotten sick at this point. Um, I personally, Mm -hmm. this morning learned of the first person that I know of through one degree of separation that has died. Okay. And I, yeah, someone, a friend of mine who's, I haven't seen him in decades, but someone that I knew in elementary school through church mm-hmm. um, posted that he lost his best friend um, from COVID-19. And um, Wow. So you know, young, this, I mean, young, not elderly. Yeah. I think in his forties and had Aww. a couple of, it looked like forties, probably had a couple of How young sad. kids and a wife. And I don't know any details of underlying stuff or not, but Obviously, that was like that was the first person that I knew mm-hmm. by yeah, one degree of separation, mm-hmm. and it just made me realize. Uh, you know, I had a degree of guilt for any complaints that I've had, and you know, it just it reminds me. Speaking of eat, eat, sleep, save the world, the book um, that we were talking about, um, what Jamie Sumner said in our interview was, as a parent with a child with serious special needs she feels like moms that don't have kids with special needs when they have complaints when they have struggles sometimes like edit their complaints with her because they mm-hmm. think oh well mm-hmm. you don't yeah i can't even complain like they'll start a sentence with right. you know i don't even want to tell you what i'm dealing with cuz it's so much right. less than what yeah. you're struggling yeah. with but my kid doesn't know if he should go to Stanford or Yale when I'm really stressed out. Yeah, no, right. I get it. <laughs> exactly. And and she said, yeah, I have struggled with feelings about that. Like, oh boy, yeah. you don't know the half of it. But she said, I would really encourage all parents have struggles. And I think exactly. that applies here. All of us are going through challenges. Mm-hmm. No, my husband did not just pass away from right. COVID-19. Or laid off. No, or I know exactly later. what you're saying. But she said, all parents have challenges. She's like, every mom out there, what you need to know is your challenge is important. It's important to God. It's important to you. And your struggle Mm -hmm. might not be the same as mine, 
but it's a struggle and that's okay. And so Mm -hmm. that was really freeing for me and, and to look back on that today and think, you know what, when we do have challenges, yeah, let's keep them in perspective, but, Mm -hmm. but let's take those challenges to God or talk to a friend about them. If you're feeling like you're having a hard time with, with isolation or, or Mm -hmm finding things for your kids to do. Like those are still struggles and don't, Absolutely. don't let the guilt of being in a decently okay position mm-hmm. keep you from looking that challenge in the eye, calling it a challenge and moving exactly. forward yep. in resolving Amen. it. Yeah. Hard to believe. And then if you're going through way more difficult challenges than what other people are. I think it's the same thing too, to not get, well, you, you don't know the half of it. You don't know how bad it is. I think, you know, I've, I've mentioned this so many times, I feel I'm getting really redundant, but this is such a universal thing that we're going through to the extent that I can't think of anything in world history that compares, um, at least not, you know, in anybody's living memory. And that should absolutely draw us together. So, you know, the emergency responder who, also takes care of his elderly mother and is terrified of getting her sick in the course of his day-to-day life. Mm -hmm. And the person who just buried their spouse to the mom who feels like she's just about to go crazy because the kids are all right there. Like everybody's going through hard times and no, like let's absolutely not get into the, um, comparison game of who's having a harder time (laughs) you know there's both sides of it and I love what you said don't feel guilty if you're going through an okay time you know when people ask me how I'm doing it's always all things considered we're doing really well yeah really really well that's not to say we're not stressed that's not to say we're not having our marital and family hiccups but all things considered we're doing well and Mm -hmm. it's okay to be able to say that because you know like both of our husbands right now, praise the Lord, still have their jobs. Like that's, um, that's propping up the economy. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> in, instead of like, oh, well, I know a lot of people have been laid off. I wish, you know, my husband was laid off too. So I didn't feel guilty. No, the <laughs> fact that, <laughs> you know, the fact that you're still getting a paycheck from your husband's work, like that's, that's helping things from falling apart even more, you know? And that's another way to look at it is, um, you're doing okay is actually helping society at large also be more okay than it would be if you weren't doing okay. So like be okay. And that's part of saving the world too. Yeah. Well, and just praying, okay, God, show me how we can then bless someone that's not in some way, you know, whether it's praying for them, whether it's getting groceries or whatever it is, you know, paying an electric bill or, you know, like if, if, if you and I were sick or someone in our family was sick, we wouldn't be able to meet here every day. And, you know, we're, we're seeing the numbers and, you know, you guys are at least listening to more than one episode. So we're assuming that we're doing an okay job, keeping you, you know, encouraged, um, we couldn't do that if, if we were totally, um, frazzled or, or sick. So yeah, there's, there's really no place for guilt or comparison, comparing our, our, um, trials to someone else's trials. This is the most universal trial that we've gone through as, you know, at least anybody living today has gone through. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm going to have to jump off. <laughs> yeah, we've <laughs> solved. All right. Hey, ready, set. <laughs> I just literally dropped my mic. Uh-oh, I think you put yourself oh. on mute, Alana. Well, it's a good thing I did because I actually did like slam my mic down and then like, oh, I bet that sounded really bad. So good thing that it muted itself. It was, um, my mic was smarter than I am. Okay, well, I know you got to run. Yeah, to- yeah. Do you want me to um, end with our, with day, let's see, our next day of our devotional real quick before we go? If you've got the time for it. Yeah, I know your kids are going to need your Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me jump. Let's do it. Yeah. Day four of our um, Praying Christian Women's Guide to Praying Through the Coronavirus Crisis, the COVID-19 Crisis. Um, You can find this at prayingchristianwomen.com slash be the light if you want to get this devotional. Day four is for people in isolation. 
our scripture is Psalm 25, 16 to 18. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. This is a Psalm of David, and it just expresses loneliness, anguish, and anxiety. And right now, I think there are people that are living either in voluntary isolation or mandatory isolation, people separated from their families and loved ones, people that know people that are sick that can't go visit them, people that are sick and feel like they're dying and, and don't have someone to, around them, their loved ones around them. Um, and maybe you're one of them, you know, listening right now. Um, so we just feel like the good news here is that that same man that wrote Psalm 25 wrote Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. That's Psalm 137, 7 and 8. So our prayer today is that God would be near to all of those that are feeling the weight of isolation. If that's you, we are praying for you right now, that God would be near to you and would bring you that same comfort and that, that assurance that David had that he can't go anywhere. There's nowhere, no isolation on the planet, in the universe, that he could go, that God wouldn't meet him there. And we're just praying that God would meet you there, wherever you are, and that God would meet your loved one wherever they are, and all of the people, that people that don't even have loved ones right now that are in isolation, God knows them. He knows them by name, and, and he's with them now. So that's our prayer today. So let's pray. Loving Father, we praise you for your tenderness and compassion. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness to your children. We thank you for caring for those who need you most right now, those who are alone, scared, and vulnerable. We lift up these hurting people to you now, Lord. We ask that you would provide for every single one of their needs. Fill the holes in their hearts that are longing for love and the need to feel seen and known. Wash over them with your spirit, covering them like a warm blanket and allowing them to experience your presence like never before. We pray for those separated from loved ones due to travel restrictions or quarantine, especially parents separated from high-risk babies and children separated from elderly or sick parents. Bring healing to the sick and peace and comfort to their loved ones. Give them glimpses of your goodness and use your people in the medical profession to shine your light in the midst of difficulty and hopelessness. Use the sick people that are in hospitals right now to be the light to the doctors and nurses who feel isolated and hopeless. Let them be the hands and feet of Jesus, able to bring comfort when others cannot. We pray for the homeless, for those suffering isolation from families due to addiction or other circumstances, and for children in the foster system or in group homes who lack stability. Heal their broken hearts, Lord. Meet them where they are. Show them love and surround them with people and messages that will lift them up and point them to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. All right. Well, until next time. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.